Welcome to the Illustration Initiative's new Let's Talk About It interview series where we speak to published illustrators about key and sometimes controversial topics. Today I am thrilled to have Elisa Paganelli here today to speak with us all about her really successful career as an illustrator of picture books, chapter books, and best-selling titles. But most importantly, she's here to speak about how you could balance mindfulness with an illustration career and how to make a thriving, successful illustration career a little bit less stressful. Before we dive in, just remember to ring that bell for reminders on future interviews with the Illustration Initiative and subscribe so you don't miss a trick. Aliza is going to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about herself, where she is, and let's get this started. Hello everyone, thank you Emily for having me here. Um, I am Elisa Paganelli and I am an Italian illustrator. I am now living uh, in UK near London. Um, I am specialized in children's book illustrator, basically. Yeah. Illustrations, sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, how many years have you been an illustrator? Uh, I've been an illustrator. I, I haven't always been an illustrator, actually, because I started as a graphic designer uh, when I was a young student. Basically, I used to work as a graphic designer since I was 15 years old. During the summertime, I used mm -hmm. to go working for a few months instead of relaxing. I wanted to to make experience, uh, but I started working in illustration in 2011. Okay. So it's about yeah 10 years now. Yeah, that's a while. So did you go to school for illustration or for yeah, I Yeah, I attended the art institute, the, the art school of my uh, my birth town, which is Modena in Italy. Uh, and I studied uh, mostly graphic design, but I was so lucky because I had a tutor who introduced me to illustration which I didn't, I never considered before because I will always wanted to uh, do a creative job. I just didn't know which one. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> she introduced me to illustration and then I enrolled to uh, another school after I, I finished the high school basically, uh, which was the European Institute of Art, um, of Design, sorry, in Turin. Uh, and there is where I, I learned how to be an illustrator, how to become an illustrator for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I graduated there. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a lot. You have definitely had an education in, in illustration <laughs> and design. And I think that the design background definitely helps illustrators. So it's interesting that you did that. Um, do you remember your first project that you ever illustrated or were paid to illustrate? Yeah, the, the very first book that I was commissioned, it was in 2011. And it was um, at the time my art style was very, very different because I used to be a graphic designer. So I, I approached illustration in as a, as a graphic designer. And that's what I was used to. The, my tutor used to, to tell me, oh, you're not an illustrator. You are a graphic designer. <laughs> Why are you studying illustration? And so my mindset was really influenced by those opinions. Um, so I, I was really scared to, to use different art styles. And my very first project was a, a early reader book called A Gelosia Piccolo Tobia. It's Jealousy Little Toby. Aww. And it was for a small Italian publisher. It was a story mm -hmm. about the, the jealousy between siblings. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's still definitely a big theme today. I feel like that emotional conflict, little kids, I feel like you, yeah, you definitely jumped in on the, in the popular side of what children's books are about. So that's probably <laughs> good that you started with such a good, a good topic, actually. Yeah. Um, did you did you do more with that publisher after or was that just like a one time thing and then you went to work with other publishers? Um, no, I think I've done just that that specific work because later they commissioned me uh, different jobs uh, which were more educational for school books, which is a different area of illustration. And I got stuck in that specific area for quite a while until I changed a bit my art style and I started with picture books and middle grade books later on in on my path. 
So at the very beginning, I worked that that the first project triggered something because I never stopped since then. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I had to wait many years to have a start in publishing because I used to work as a graphic designer to attend the Bologna Children's Book Fair since I was a 17 years old, uh-huh. but nothing came up. So I kept working as a graphic designer while um, trying to improve my illustration, my um, illustrate illustration art style and portfolio. But it took me quite a few years to have a proper start. Yeah, how did you think your style um, evolved since you started illustrating? Because you say you had their different style for educational and then you kind of changed. How did yeah. that process kind of go about? At the very beginning, uh, as I said, as I was mastering the, the Adobe Creative Suite <laughs> <laughs> and not very much the traditional art style of illustration, uh, I felt more confident in using Adobe Illustrator, okay. which um, conveyed to my art style a, a sort of cold feeling because mm-hmm. the shape were really um, rigid, the colors were flat. So mm-hmm. that basically quickly led me to work on the educational area of mm-hmm. this of, uh, field of illustration. So I understood that if I wanted something else, I had to work on my art style. And basically this started um, with myself. Nobody, nobody told me, I just, ha- I just was like, okay, if I want to achieve this goal, I need to do something, what should I do? And I started working uh, on, my, on my boundaries, basically, because my limits, because I didn't know how to move from that art style on beyond that, that art style. I didn't know how to do it. So I've done my research and you, know, you have to try, 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 <laughs> and find what resonates with yourself. Yeah, I think that that's really, that's a common question I'm asked actually is, uh, what do I mean when I say educational styles? <laughs> because I will say to illustrators, you, this is your educational style. This will get you jobs with educational publishers, um, which is not a bad thing. And there's definitely people who want to do a lot of educational books. Maybe that's their goal as an illustrator. Maybe that's the style that does inspire them. But I think a lot of times what people don't realize is sometimes educational jobs can be paid a little lower and also might not be as inventive or as imaginative because you have to do exactly what it is trying to teach. You're trying to teach something very specific and you you don't really want it to be distracting Mm -hmm. the reader from what the main point is. So you can't like adding little extra details or adding like a a subtext might be distracting um, or adding emotions to different characters that were not prescribed or like specifically allocated to the character would maybe be something you can't always do in educational work, which you can do in picture books and you can do in middle grade. So, I mean, I, I think both are good, but I think it's a really normal process to go from educational work to more picture book storytelling and then to like higher end publishers which I think is kind of was your journey yeah especially because I I think that it was good to me uh, for me to start from from there because I didn't really know what I wanted to illustrate at the beginning Mm -hmm. I just wanted to to draw to to experiment I was like please give me a commission I just want to to do something please I want to draw mm-hmm. and so it was good for me because when you are commissioned uh, educational projects you've got loads of illustration to to be done very quickly mm-hmm. so they this give you the chance this is the, the best the best workout the best practice if you are, are starting in this field uh-huh. and while you do that you you find out what what you like what you want to do next mm-hmm. So that was the best start to me because I I I got to do a lot of work. Uh, if you if you get to negotiate, you can you can really have a good income as well. Uh, mm-hmm. It depends on you if you are quick on you if you are quick if you want to negotiate and things like that. But in the meantime, you need to set your own goal and mm-hmm. 
find out what you want to do really it, it, yeah. it is good mm -hmm. and that kind of brings me to how we know each other which is that um Elisa was represented is represented by a sound illustration agency and when I was an agent there we did a number of books together um I was trying to think of ones that people would know more so the first one that came to mind was Moon's First Friends just because it it did grace the New York Times number one bestseller list numerous times and was with source books who's really great. And yeah, there it is. It's so wonderful. I love it. And that is in a more of a picture book style of yours, right? And more yeah. of a, <clears throat> yes, and Mars, yeah, yeah first friends just, came yeah. after, first pets, right? Mars, first pets. Exactly. Yes. Mars, um, first friends. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah, they changed the title they changed along it. the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We remember, like, we both remember the first title, no, no, I uh -huh. think it's good. Yeah, this is a different art style because what I used to do is to try to understand what the client wants. Mm -hmm. And of course, I need to filter what the client wants through my own view, my own way of uh, illustrating, which I don't know which my, which my way is, but mm -hmm. that, there definitely is a way there because I, <laughs> at this point, I came to understand that people um, um, recognize my art style, even, even if I don't know which my art style is, because I work in different, uh, with different um, art styles, and maybe we, we can talk about it later. But for this specific project, the, the, the client basically picked a few pieces from my portfolio, but mm -hmm. Of course, they add information to it. They just, the client don't just say, ah, oh, I want this. They say, okay, uh, this is an inspiration for the project. You need to develop to explore that more. And this is what we want. So you need basically to, the psychology behind there, because you need to understand yeah. the client, to understand the goal of the project because they have goals for the market as well. Mm -hmm. So you need to, to strike their goal. And this process led me to work with many different clients. This specific project, uh, I have to say, is very different from what I usually do. Yeah, uh -huh, that's it's why more cartoony. That. it's more cartoony with the round mm -hmm. eyes. Um, but yeah, this is because it, it was what the client wanted. So it's not bad to... <laughs> There's this uh, sort of stigma amongst the illustrators that's so nice. Uh, they, they want, they, when you go to art school, you are told that you need to find your art style. The sooner, the better. But what I want to say, uh, I try to remind myself too, because I get frustrated around this topic most of the time. <laughs> I think it's the same for all artists, uh, is the, the philosophical uh, bigger question, who I am, uh, what my art style is. There's not just one for me, for example. My answer is this, because mm -hmm. our it's like our personality. We have different side of ourselves and we behave differently depending on, on <laughs> who approaches who approaches us. Yeah. And it's the same with the client. So a specific project like this one might trigger um, uh, an image in your mind, which is different from, from what you expected from yourself but if that's what you what came up to your mind you need to listen to it i think because even doing something different um gives you the chance to explore a different side of you and from there that can lead somewhere else yeah you know mm -hmm. what i mean it, mm -hmm. it's a path so sometimes you need at least in my opinion in my experience i like to follow uh also the the client instructions because it, it gave me the chance to explore to experiment mm -hmm. yeah that's that i remember when when that happened with this book and i thought that was really good for you because i think that's what happens to people i think for some reason i keep bringing people on to these interviews who have this underlying theme of not just one style and i i know so many artists who actually do have just one style and that's all they want to do um however i think they're rare and i think sometimes they kind of pigeonhole themselves into one type of book and then they get bored or sad or they don't want to do illustrating books anymore because they didn't allow themselves the freedom of 
doing what you said, pushing your boundaries and going past what you know, and, and that's okay. And that's a good thing to do because it can lead you to the opportunities you actually want. And I, um, I remember when you came to Astound, you actually had a very different style than even the ones you're working in now. They were more digital feeling. You have a lot more texture, a lot more, um, wait, how do you work right now? What, are, what mediums do you work in currently? I keep working digitally, mm -hmm. but I had um, this growing, growing urge to get close to the traditional technique. Mm -hmm. I'm also attending art classes, painting classes in my very little spare time mm -hmm. because I really, I, I think I've done the opposite process of what usually people do in art school. They usually start from traditional yeah. uh, mm, painting, traditional technique, and then they move on to uh, learning computer skills. I've done, to me, it was the other way around. Yeah. I started from the computer and then I am now exploring more the traditional technique, which Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, for the timing reason and uh, uh, this speedy process that is needed in publishing in order to finish a project as soon as you can, we need mm -hmm. to keep working digitally, but you can achieve the same results of traditional technique, even digitally, thanks to, I have just, I purchased uh, recently the Cintiq 16. I used to work with the Intuos, Intuos which okay. is a basically a tablet, a tablet, but um, a drawing tablet, but you still look at the computer while, while you're drawing, okay? Mm -hmm. This model instead uh, allows you to see your project directly on the surface of the tablet. So yeah. it feels more, it feels closer to drawing on paper. Mm -hmm. It's pretty obvious for, for, for most of artists. To me, it was a slow process. Mm -hmm. I really, I tend to, to get uh, uh, fond of my tools and I don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to, to get rid of my intuos, but I needed to do it in order to achieve something else. So again, it's boundaries. Again, it, it, it's going beyond your comfort, comfort zone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and I and I know I told you this um, earlier separately, I think, before we started speaking, but I will never, ever forget when you were working in a few, like a different style, and then, which wasn't so different from what you have now, really, when it comes to the, the figures and that kind of thing, but yeah, like the, the, def, the technical style and like the tools you were using were different, and you sent us a Christmas card and it had a moose. Do you remember this moose? It had a moose yeah. and, a, and a lady like on yeah. the chair. And unfortunately, I don't have it here. I know, I don't have, I was like, where is it? I definitely have it somewhere. I've moved a lot since then. So I don't have it with me, but it was limited colors. So mm -hmm. at that point in time, I don't think a lot of books were doing limited color palettes. And I think it was kind of the, the dawn of that time. Um, and you sent it just as a card. <laughs> and I remember telling you that I was really excited that you had this other style and that we could do limited color palettes. And you were, and you had clearly, because then you sent me all these other ones you'd done, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, in that style. Um, so clearly you had been working on that on your own. But I think sometimes people don't realize that it's okay to yeah make a change like that or try something that's just completely different or maybe not your usual coloring style or your usual uh technique that's that is okay to do that is also a question people ask about is it dangerous or bad for your career to have two styles and i'm going to say two is a good amount because then they don't get confused but there is a problem where when you start a new style that the publisher might not feel confident that you can really do a whole book in that style. So just to people watching, I would just suggest you do what Elisa did and make a lot of pieces in that style just so that they know you can do that with different characters and different backgrounds and different stories because there's just this I think there's a hesitance from art directors from having had bad experiences where they found one piece in someone's portfolio and tried to hire them for it, but then they actually couldn't really do it again. 
Um, I believe illustrators can do it again, but sometimes they might have just started that style and they might need some time to work it out before they are able to do that kind of fluently, as I call it. Um, but I think you, you were able to do that. And I think it was really just wonderful watching your progress and watching the change and seeing how change can be positive. And I think I actually told other illustrators that I've met, I tell them your story, Elisa, because as like a, as encouragement, like, look, this works, this is, it's okay. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't know. It's, I feel uh, on the wrong side sometimes mm -hmm. because I don't have a very um, recognizable maybe outside. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not outside of myself, so I can't <laughs> tell. But uh -huh. I have the feeling that publishers maybe can recognize cer certain traits in my mm -hmm. illustrations, even when the style apparently is different. I don't know what it is, but there might, there might be something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what, what it, the thing is that I really criticize myself a lot. That's why I need, I change very frequently my art style because I want to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I feel stuck in that art style. I'm not satisfied and I don't want to get stuck there just because it's working, just because it's giving me commission, good commissions. No, I need to feel that I am improving. If I am just there doing a job uh, that is giving me money, good money, okay, sometimes, some, sometimes, <laughs> just sometimes, but sometimes it happens, okay, but if I don't feel I'm improving and that my art style represents where I am in that moment, something is not working for me in, on my path. That's why I change very quickly. And also I'm never satisfied of what I do. Mm -hmm. So this leads me to constant changes, constant experiment, which I do anytime I receive a commission. I take the chance of working on an actual project to introduce a little something here, something there. Mm -hmm. the, I am secretly improving my art style and, and testing things without the client notice it. <laughs> but I constantly try to add on uh, details. Uh, just one more word about the black and white art style you mentioned. Getting rid of colors uh, allowed me to focus on the gesturality, on the, um, the strokes, mm -hmm which were loosening up uh, to me. It was, um, I came from Adobe Illustrator, round shapes, fixed shapes, mm -hmm. and I went on uh, in that postcard, for example, with a more like pencil feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, so getting rid of colors gave me the chance to focus on the lines, uh, the, the material, the, 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 tu the texture, mm -hmm. right? more on that. So sometimes you need to make space to focus on something very specific. Yeah, I truly, uh-huh. It's sometimes, yeah, if you kind of limit your, your, uh, what you can work with, it can make you focus on your technique and that's really great. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think I would say you have a very recognizable art style. You know, some illustrators truly have completely different styles where they actually draw their figures in truly unrecognizable ways. I think that can be harder. I think you you do have your own voice. It's clear through it. So that makes people again feel more comfortable to hire you because they do know they're going to get these things if they need it to be more like this or like this. They know that you actually have the ability to mm -hmm do those changes, but I think they also hire you because they do know that you add the little details and that you do make it fun because I have also heard from publishers that they will not work with an illustrator anymore after a certain amount of years, not because they don't love them, but because they can't have everything look like that one style because all of a sudden their whole publishing house is just that one illustrator and they get worried about it and they say, if this illustrator could evolve a little bit, become a bit more, you know, something about it, just let them evolve. Uh, and which often means loosening up and mm. becoming a little bit more traditional just because of the trends of this time. If that matches with what people want to do, which I feel like it kind of usually does. I feel like people start in what you're saying, like a little bit more together or 
yeah, like more shapes and maybe mm -hmm. an illustrator or something. And then they decide they want to actually truly do this traditionally, or they want to find a way to make a digital traditional sort of feeling. That's good and definitely welcome by publishers too. I don't think that they feel like you have to be exactly the same. I mean, you can, you can look at some really famous illustrators and even they, they have an evolution, you yeah, know, like any yeah. artist. Yeah. yeah. And most of the times I found out that you evolve there where you are scared of doing something. For yeah. example, um, the Adventures on Train series. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is with Macmillan and you've done five. Macmillan. Yeah. It's a series that is very famous. It received, it won a um, lot of awards, mm -hmm. but at the beginning, I was struggling with this. The, the publisher knows it. I was like, I'm not the right person for this book because I've never done nothing, uh, anything so realistic. It was really a challenge. I usually welcome challenges. I like challenges, but this one was a huge one. I had to draw trains. I've never drawn a train, a train before, uh -huh. <laughs> not so realistically. And I love working black and white. I love working on middle grade projects. I really love it and a plus I get to draw and um, to design the, 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 the covers and this gives me the chance to bring back my graphic design uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> personality so I, I really love when I can match uh, illustration and graphic design together mm -hmm. but about the internals it was really a challenge and I found out that I truly love working in this style now. I wanted to show you something. Hold them up. Yeah, I was going to say, hold them up. Yes. This, uh -huh. this was the first book. And also in this series, I evolved my art style because here there's a, um, a kind of drawing. And in the last, last uh, um, book that was published recently, uh, it came out, I think, on February. I want to show you something very specific. It, it was more like they are required. They asked me to do something like comic book. Oh, I love that. No, I had not seen that one yet, actually. That's so, crazy. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was so scared of this project. I was <laughs> about to, to call it out, to, to say, okay, I'm, I quit this because I can't do it. It's not, I don't know how to. I, I really want the client to be happy. And I felt that I couldn't make him, make him happy. So where I, I recognized my limits and I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I need to step back. But they were so sure about me. This gave me the strength to, mm -hmm. to, to improve basically. And it came out something that I'm really happy about now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because because I, I enjoy this art style now. Of course, it's a struggle anytime you need to create something from scratch. This this is this is our life as an artist and illustrators. But I feel good in doing it. It's not so when you face your limits, it's there when you can really achieve something. Yeah. You just need to find the, the courage to face your limits and your fear because it's exactly there where you can evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I guess also realize that people are supporting you and cheering you on, even if it doesn't feel like that, because I know as your agent, I was always feeling very supportive of you doing new things, even though maybe it didn't seem like a good idea or possible, maybe to you or something at the time, but that the art directors, if they hire you, it's because they believe in you. And if they have a vision and they see your art and they think you can do it, then you can, you definitely can. And I look know. how wonderful this series turned out for you. This is like, an, this is an amazing series that's so popular, yeah. internationally it, it popular. A, yeah, it is a, an international bestseller. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, you, you, I couldn't imagine anything like that, but yeah. most, mostly I'm happy because really, it, it taught me again that I need to face my fears in 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 illustration in life it's the mm -hmm. same so yeah. it, it's good I, I really want to deliver this message because it worked for me and mm -hmm. it is something that works for everybody I think 
Definitely. And on that note about like, you know, illustrating and life and, and that intersection, I'm going to ask you the the harder question now, you know, illustrating, I feel like is more than a full-time job. It's a job that can take over your life in a lot of ways. It can go into the weekends, even though you don't want it to, you might have your set hours, but you might end up pushing those uh, set hours to take on new work. And I really wanted to ask you, how do you or do you not (laughs) balance life with your full-time illustration job and your very busy illustration career? I think that um, as everything is starts from yourself and what I've learned over the years, because I'm a, uh, I'm a workaholic, this is a problem (laughs) because it's a problem. I like to be busy. I like to create things, even in my spare time, I feel the need to create. So instead of illustrating, perhaps I create, I bake, or I go to a museum, I look for inspiration, I uh, attend art classes, I need Mm -hmm. to create all the time. This is me, so I I need to accept this. But if you you, um, feel overwhelmed, you need to be able to feel it, to understand that you are going beyond what you're what it's reasonable for you, for your creative energy, your positive energy and your body. So over the years, given uh, after I accepted that that I am a person that wants to be busy, Mm -hmm. uh, after I accepted that I uh, might be taking too much work, I had added this up, which is listen to your body, listen to yourself because your body sends you signals all the time. If you don't listen to it, you get, uh, you burn out. You get to the point that you burn out, you, you have a huge crisis, you can basically turn your life upside down because you're too tired. Mm-hmm. You don't have to reach that point. You need to start listening much earlier and your body always speaks. So this is what I'm learning, I've learned to do Uh, Also, thanks to meditation, yoga, and what works for me today in order to find a good balance, even if it's an ongoing process, process, Mm -hmm. I'm still learning. I need to improve on this side because because of my bad habits of being what I am, a workaholic. (laughs) Um, I I have this routine, which is not fixed, of course, because... uh, if you give yourself rules and you don't respect them, then you get stressed mm-hmm. out because of, the, of those. Yeah. So you don't have to, be, you need to be fluid in your life. But what works for me is, is to have a, a safe zone, which is I wake up at the, the same hours, uh, same hour every day. I've got my daily routine, which is breakfast, go to the loo, wash myself, do mm-hmm. everything that normal people do. Mm-hmm. Um, and do my daily uh, yoga yoga uh, routine. And if I'm very, very good, <laughs> that day, a very good student, uh, I also meditate, not always. Uh, I can't, I'm not, it, it's normal. We, we can't keep up with everything, with the good job all the time. So mm-hmm. I don't meditate every day as I wish to do. And what uh, I found very interesting, uh, a very interesting experience that um, I've done is to do this um, path, which is the artist's way. Okay. If you don't know it, it's very mm-hmm. good because it, it mm, blends together med- um, mindfulness with the artist's job. It's very famous among artists, uh, artists uh, and uh, uh, filmmakers, creative people, and it teaches you, if you don't have the habit yourself to set your own uh, routines, goals, uh, I am like that because I used to have a business, I used to have employees as well, so I had to be very well organized, so I used to do this for myself as well as a self-employed today, uh, mm-hmm. but if you don't have this habit, you might find uh, this very helpful yeah. because it, it, it suggests for basically to have a routine and to save time for yourself, uh, to, to have basically a date with yourself once a week, take yourself to dinner, to a museum, 
things like that. So this is very helpful and I wanted to mention it in case. It's a really good resource. Yes, that's a really good resource. Um, I know you've studied philosophy and mindfulness and you're kind of bringing up uh, how you incorporate those sort of things into your day-to-day -day routine. Um, what got you into that sort of thought process or what sort of started you on that? I, I've always been very interested in the, um, in who we are as a human beings. In, mm -hmm. I like to understand people to try to try to understand people to understand myself to understand the, the meaning of life so basically everything started with the basic questions about life for me mm -hmm. and it's nature when I go into when I step into a bookshop I immediately go to the psychology and non-fiction section mm -hmm. I don't know why because I again I want to relax to read something light and sometimes even superficial because it makes you feel good I can't I just I always end up being in the section of psychology and philosophy because <laughs> I, I like to research to to I am a um I question everything <laughs> even myself of course I start questioning myself mm -hmm. so this is what this is my nature I think and I I don't stop it now <laughs> just just because social media tells you that you need to be someone very bright brilliant and this and that colorful if you're not like that you know you're not like that so basically now I am allowing myself to be the boring person that I am that reads psychology books all the time and this is what I am and it's good because it translates who I am even in my illustrations so it's good <laughs> I mean, I think that's what makes you very, very interesting. And if you were just one of the many, you know, poppy, colorful people out there, I, I don't think it would set you apart in the way that this does. And I think that um, I, I'm going to direct people to look at your Instagram because you do a lot of personal illustration projects and series and little doodles and things on there that are really inspirational. And I find them very soothing. <laughs> <laughs> or make me think or make me take action and I find that really wonderful and I think when when on a business side on the marketing side you might be doing those for your own self but I think it's also helpful for people to see how what you love or do outside of your commissioned work actually does affect your you know kind of free drawing time pieces so how do you think your studies, like those philosophy and psychology and all of that um, affect your illustrations. Do you think about that when you're doing illustrations for clients or do you kind of just only think about that when you're doing your own personal illustrations or, or do they not intersect at all? I feel like I do see it in your illustration, but maybe that's <laughs> not intentional. <laughs> I don't think it's intentional because when you uh, question yourself, when you mm -hmm. uh, seek for inspiration around you, whether it is watching a film, movie, going to a museum or in nature, hiking, things like that, you're expressing yourself basically freely without anybody saying you who you need to be or what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and you nurture yourself there. And you take that part of yourself with you when you're working without, without realizing it. Uh, so I think it's some nurturing yourself uh, on the psychological side, enjoying yourself uh, makes you a better artist, I think. Mm -hmm. Because you get closer and closer to your real voice. You don't have to realize it. You don't have to, to know it. It's an unconscious process, process, and it needs to be unconscious. Mm -hmm. But it, 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 that's why it's very important to save those resting time, to have those resting time, those me, that, mm, those um, moments, yeah. and me time, mm -hmm. because it's there when you are not illustrating that you are nurturing your inner artist. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I. I also feel like just elaborating on that a little bit even myself if I am not sleeping if I don't do yoga one day I I feel different for the 
whole rest of the day, my abilities for the whole rest of the day are not as strong. I'm not as clear. I'm not even as efficient. <laughs> and it, it takes longer for me at least to do something when I'm not as well rested or I haven't taken a moment for myself. And then it kind of just keeps going. Like you're just on like a ball rolling down a hill and you can't, you know, catch up to it. And you have to just stop and, and wait, you know, and reevaluate and try to uh, come up with a routine for yourself if that's what you need to do. I think that book, we will definitely link to the book in the comments of this because I think that's really important. Um, any kind of any kind of outside sources to help all of us overthinkers <laughs> slow down yeah. and, yeah, and I've, get done, I've done all different all kind of things to mm -hmm. me it has worked doing a shiatsu course a meditation i used to attend i'm not in italy anymore but in italy I used to attend a buddhist temple a buddhist uh, zen temple mm -hmm. uh, anything that works with you what works for me might not work for you you need to find what works for you the important thing is that you have moments precious moments where you express yourself freely mm -hmm. so and you're not losing your time because at times we think oh if i go for a walk i'm losing time i need to to do my i have a deadline no mm -hmm. because i I noticed that if I take a, a whole weekend free without working, without even checking my emails, on Monday, I am much more productive and that the inspiration flows very vehemently. <laughs> I don't know how to uh -huh. say it. I'll say it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's there. The inspiration is there. I, I don't struggle. So resting makes you more productive. Uh, I think I think this is basically scientifically scientifically proven. I don't have to to, to say it. It's mm -hmm. not my my area of expertise, but I have my own experience that I can just speak from my experience. Of course, <laughs> I think it's really helpful for people to hear this that they need to take that moment, whatever it is for them, however they want to take it, because uh, we're all you know in the beginning maybe people are so worried about not getting any work that they're just doing portfolio development, they're working a job they hate, they still may not have time to rest, you know? And then for those who finally graduate into full-time illustration, sometimes you don't know when to say no to jobs. I know we were talking about that a little bit, like when do you say no to jobs? Um, but I think you have to listen to yourself. And if you are getting all those cues, like your body's giving you those cues that say you're overtired, you're not thinking, your skill level seems to be dropping, you could even have physical um, problems, your wrists could hurt. You know, I've had artists get carpal tunnel, you know, things that are really hard on an illustrator, your eyes. I mean, those are your tools. You, it's, this, is a, this is an interesting occupation because your eyes and your body are part of it. And those can get tired. So you have to take care of your tools, which is your body in this scenario. On your career side, uh, are you working on any projects currently that you're allowed to tell us about? Yeah, I am working on Adventures on Train series. It's gonna come out as the sixth book on October, I think. And I'm working on a few pictures book. Uh, I've been so lucky enough to have projects that um, matched my interest in psychology and nature. Mm -hmm. So one is about uh, seeds and uh, seasons. And the other one is about mental health for children, of oh, course. Mm -hmm. And I've got a few nonfiction books as well uh, that I'm working on. I always work on very different projects at the same time and this is one of those moments where I definitely uh, said too many yeses perhaps <laughs> but I'm juggling and I think I'm gonna do it and then I don't know I hope in late autumn to to rest a bit but yeah I've got a few projects and one uh, is a series about uh, instrument musical instruments okay with the London Symphony Orchestra is in collaboration oh, with yeah. them Mm -hmm. so, yeah it's a long and a very um uh it's an important project because it requires a lot of details realistically wise mm -hmm. uh but it's good 
Yeah. So, yeah. so there's, uh, I've got a lot on my plate as usual. <laughs> that's a lot. Is that the second book with the orchestra or is it the first book? Uh, we've done, I think you, uh, you were in a sound when yeah. I've done the first book. Mm -hmm. Now we are doing the series inspired okay. from the first book. So each book will have an instrument. Okay. It, it, each book it will be focused on an instrument. So it's a, a long series and yeah. Yeah, that's With, great. And do you, do you feel like you take into account your interests on, you know, uh, mental health, the environment, animals, like you said, you're getting those projects now. Do you take that into account when you select books you will illustrate? Um, do you prioritize those? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I am at a point in my career where if I receive multiple um, inquiries, I get to choose whether one resonates best with me. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other um, things that matters because you need to evaluate mm -hmm. the budget, the timing and uh, the publisher, because the, also who you are working with is important. To me, at mm -hmm. least, is, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, now I think that um, publishers um, need to know what you like because they know that if an illustrator is happy with the topic, mm -hmm. uh, the work will be amazing yes. <laughs> because they are better inspired. So if you let them know what you like, maybe they can, uh, they can give you the right commission for you. Mm -hmm. For example, Mike, I have a newsletter that I send to clients uh, monthly. So basically, I, I speak about uh, the public, the, the incoming uh, projects, uh, what is going to be published. But there's also a section in my newsletter about my personal interest. Uh, I, I tell them that I volunteer for which charity I volunteer for, uh, the art classes that I'm taking. Um, Things that they, they, they like to know, I think, I, they like to know something more personal and it's good for them to know because it, it turns out that they give you the right project then. <laughs> if yeah. they know you, if they know who you are in your personal life, mm -hmm. they, remind, they, they remind about you. So, mm -hmm. I, I like nature and mindfulness. So when they have a mindfulness project, maybe they think about me, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a really good to have that sort of connection, that mind to image connection. And I yeah. think that that's another funny thing that people don't seem to always know is that you as an individual human, your interests, your passions, what you are educated on, where you are from, where you live, where you've gone, all of those things that make you a person, your culture, even your religion or, or spirituality or all of those things uh, can definitely get you books. And sometimes it's about the style of the illustrator. Sometimes it's only about, as long as you have a certain skill level, sometimes it's only about what you actually know. Because when a publisher is um, bringing a book out, they have to run it by their sales teams. And the sales teams are always worried about the reviews that will go, this illustrator didn't know, or they didn't know anything about the subject. Like maybe they can tell and the review will come out and they'll notice those things that an illustrator who already knew about it would add the right details or draw something the right way. Or if you're someone like you, at least because you're saying, um, I saw your Twitter about researching, your tweet about researching and going out and researching a lot that you, you definitely can illustrate without knowing about it. If you do the research, you know, that you need to do for it. So I'm not yeah. saying if you're not knowledgeable about subjects that you won't illustrate them, you very much most likely will illustrate a lot of things, you know, nothing about. However, if your passion and your style kind of meet in the same place and that's your perfect book, then I also think your working day is probably a lot happier, right? Because you're illustrating yeah. something you were enjoying. Exactly, it's really important. I think um, at the very beginning, it's good to experiment and you need, to, it's something I keep doing because for example, I have been commissioned a, a sample. So I don't know if we are going ahead, and again, in my mind, I was like, I'm not the right illustrator for this. I'm not the right. <laughs> because you always feel you're not good enough. This is, 
imposter syndrome. <laughs> but um, the publisher pushed me and he was like, all right, try to do this, try to do that. And then we, meet in the, we met in the middle where my art style met mm. their, um, their need, their mm. needs. So it was fun. Uh, at the end of the day, it's fun again to push uh, your boundaries. Mm -hmm. You need to keep doing it all the time. But if you can push your boundaries, art style wise, while you're working on a topic that you really like, that's a win win. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely true. And you've done so many books. You've done so many different books. And I think it really shows how. Sorry, there's a tale. Really that's my cat she, she oh look at that <laughs> yes i will mine's over on over here off screen actually my cat kind of matches your cat yeah <laughs> yeah the white and, and colored spots it's so cute oh gosh it's a, see and you also need a little friend in your studio or wherever you're working always you know always. it's very important <laughs> and petting cats is definitely a mindfulness definitely she, she feel feels better. when I need comfort she can, and yeah. my cat remind me usually when it's time to sleep time to eat time mm -hmm. to wake up in the morning because they want to eat so they wake me mm -hmm. up so yeah yeah it's really it's pretty <laughs> handy to have them around <laughs> yeah and they do they make you get up too sometimes you'll be sitting for hours and hours and you'll have to get up because the cat will be over there doing something it's not a bad thing Get a pet. No, <laughs> it's my yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Just to wrap this up, I would love to hear if you have any advice or anything else you'd like to add. I don't think I really need, I can teach anyone anything. I just want to remind people <laughs> that we are under a lot of pressure because we are required mm. to be something, to be brilliant, to, to present ourselves in certain ways on social media, to be there all the time. I would just like to say, do you, you, we, need, we all need to listen to ourselves more. If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel that you are enjoying what you're drawing, basically that's the right way no matter what social media say uh, what other people say what your tutor might say because i've been told I, I would never become an illustrator all the time i just met one single tutor which uh, she was my mentor i keep mm -hmm. her in my heart because she was the only one saying ah oh, you may become an illustrator all the <laughs> other ones who used to tell me you will never be one so what I want to say is just listen to yourself. If you're enjoying what you're doing, you are on the right path. And when you're tired, you, are, you need to allow yourself to stop and get some rest, get some fresh air, go in nature. We need nature a lot, a pet, a plant, a plant. Uh, I don't know, go somewhere else where there's mm -hmm. greenery around. But yeah, because we, we, don't, we don't really know. We never know who we are. And we've been told constantly who we should be, but that's not the right path. No. The right path, in my opinion, is when you are enjoying something, that's the right way. Mm -hmm. Keep up the good job there and forget about other voices and things like that. Because I myself see wonderful, talented illustrator and I'm like, all right, I need to quit. I'm not good to keep up. <laughs> to keep up with them and then I remind myself what do I like to do I like to draw so I keep doing it mm -hmm. it's so important yes definitely follow your passion I I have seen so many illustrators I can't even give you that number <laughs> and I'm talking about unpublished illustrators I've I've seen so many unpublished illustrators and I believe every single person can be an illustrator. I don't believe that anyone can't be. And I get very, I've heard other people say this, like even, I'm not gonna name names, but I've heard like major, major art directors have told illustrators who later would were signed at Astound that they'd never become an illustrator. And they told me this person, I don't think I can work with that publisher. That publisher told me I would 
never be an illustrator. And I'm like, well, we signed you. So we believe in you. And now we're going to get you jobs with all their competitors <laughs> so they can see, yes, you can be an illustrator. And then one day they might want to work with you or maybe, maybe not. But, you know, I, I just think it's, it's hard work is a big part of this. You do have to put in a lot of time and study and learn and continue to improve upon yourself because like I was saying, even the most successful illustrators are always working to improve. And I think that's why they are so successful. And it's crazy to me, Elisa, that you would think you're, you're not one of the best illustrators. You 100% are, <laughs> your, your resume proves that. So, it, but that just shows how everyone's just working, always working to improve. And yeah. that's the difference. If you, if you have the determination and the ability and the resources to educate yourself and keep doing that, then you can be an illustrator, but you have to really want it like anything else that people are really good at. You have to really want things that are hard. So you have to want it. And then when you're in it, and once you start, start that job and that life, the rest is really important to maintain it. Yeah, I, I didn't mention I didn't mention what is really important to me, for example, is to set goals. goals yeah. I need to, I need to, it's not just like a, a hippie life where you oh I go with the flow and just have <laughs> some rest sometimes. It's not like that. You need to be very, very efficient, uh, which include in your schedule to have a, 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 a set time for rest, but this doesn't mean that you have, don't have goals and that you don't have to work really hard. And to me, for example, at some point I was like, all right, my goal this year is to work with um, international, publish, uh, international publisher. Mm -hmm. My goal this year is to have an agent. My goal this year is to blah, blah, blah. Each year I have a goal. At the moment, I want to make my work um, more... Um, useful that's why i'm i'm focusing on trying to work on specific topics because i like to mm -hmm. raise raise some awareness to feel that i'm resonating with the project and also i would like to improve my authorial part i would like to uh, publish uh, books that i also try to write mm -hmm. uh, this is an Again, I'm trying to improve. So what you said is so true. You never never stop learning. You need to stay curious and to keep studying, to keep researching. It's an ongoing process, never ending process, <laughs> basically. Yeah, never ending. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate you speaking with me and sharing all your wisdom because even though it doesn't maybe seem like it, it's so helpful to, I think, connect with people, even if we're not directly speaking to a a hundred people here, a hundred people might see this and they might, you know, understand or feel a little better about themselves or feel like everyone does have that, like, inhale, like, <sighs> you know, like just breathe, <laughs> you know, because it's really hard and no one takes that moment. So we're giving everyone permission to take a moment for themselves. <laughs> yeah. By having a conversation. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thank Elisa. You so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Emily. Bye.